Next to our focus on regulatory developments related to chemical control legislation, Chemcon Asia 2024 has a strong focus on sustainability. And therefore in Bangkok we organize something new, our Inspire Investment in Sustainable Growth Forum. This forum aims to connect and inspire investors, industry experts and regulators by sharing and exploring implementation and investment experiences in a sustainable value chain. If anyone understands what is necessary to have these two worlds join, it's Patrick Witkowski from Chemsec. So let's connect to Göteborg with Patrick and get inspired. Hi Sherd, great to share some uh, thoughts with you. Patrick, can you outline the Chemsec's investor initiative on hazardous chemicals that has gained so much interest and explain why it is really relevant for both investors and the chemical industry? Yeah, sure. So. Um Chemsec, we're a Swedish-based NGO and uh, we work to um, reduce the production and use of uh, hazardous chemicals. And um, since a number of years back we've had this uh, ranking uh, of the world's largest uh, pub publicly traded chemical companies uh, called Chemscore. Where we basically rank uh, these companies based on their um, chemicals management and uh, toxic footprint. And um, since last year, so um, 2023, uh, we've also coordinated uh, the investor initiative on hazardous chemicals. So this is a, uh, an investor network uh, now gathering more than 60 large institutional investors with um, 12 trillion dollars of assets under management or advice and uh, this network um, works to reduce the financial risks linked to um, hazardous uh, chemicals. So um, they are um, you know split up into different engagement teams that are directly engaged with um, a number of these companies that we rank in Chemscore where they have dialogues with them uh, which are ongoing um, about these topics and uh, the uh, initiative basically has three key asks. So the first is for the companies to increase their transparency. Um, the second is to uh, publish a time bound phase out plan of products that are or contain hazardous chemicals. And the third is to uh, develop safer alternatives. And uh, also, yeah, so the reason why um, this, uh, the, you know, the chemical topic has uh, garnered so much interest lately from investors is, um, you know, to a large extent uh, because of PFAS. Um, so obviously, PFAS is a uh, huge systemic risk um, that these forever chemicals are building up in our environment and in our bodies and so on. And this is um, problematic for large institutional investors, you know, that own a piece of every asset uh, in the world, basically. But it's also clearly uh, financially material to individual companies. So, um, you know, we, we've seen this these really huge uh, litigation cases in the in the US, for example, where companies, uh, chemical manufacturers, have had to pay, you know, multi-billion-dollar um, agree to multi-billion-dollar settlements um, linked to P uh, PFAS contamination. So this is obviously something that uh, hurts these companies and that makes it important for investors to. Um, to uh, understand and uh, engage with companies on these topics. Very informative. Our two-day special forum starts with a joint Sustainable Thursday program that offers investors a deep dive together with industry experts in the ambitions, challenges and consequences of the transition towards a more sustainable industry. On Investor Friday the forum continues with roundtable discussions where best practices and benchmarks of sustainable approaches for industry are shared. Patrick, can you, based on your experience, share some of those best practices and benchmarks? Yeah, so, uh, so through ChemScore, uh, we have identified you know, a number of best uh, 
practice examples. So, well, if we start with disclosure, um, you know what what the IIC is asking for is for companies to disclose their uh, production volumes and share of revenue, uh, you know, from various hazardous chemicals, and for that disclosure to be on a uh, global level. So. Uh, you know, we're not asking for the for the ingredients in formulas or you know individual products or anything like that. Uh, so just on a company-wide uh, level, how exposed are you as a company, uh, you know, to various hazardous chemicals? So ideally, this reporting uh, should be on a substance by substance basis, uh, but otherwise, um, you know, according to hazard classes and. Uh, this is something that the um, uh, Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, the CSRD, in the EU is requiring now anyway. So, uh, so yeah, you asked about best practices. So there are, you know, some companies in ChemScore that have, you know, pretty good disclosure practices. So Savic, uh, for example, they uh, publish, uh, you know, a large part of their uh, chemical portfolio. So you can see their production volumes uh, for individual substances. Um, Broskem also publishes a, 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 a kind of similar document that they call a valuation book, um, which is pretty straightforward and you know easy to grasp. Eastman Chemical and uh, Lanxess they uh, they state that publicly that they do not produce any additional uh, SVHC substances in their plants outside of the EU or the US. So this is also very good since um, you know we only have. Uh, data in in uh, in the EU and US where companies are required to register um, you know substances that they produce. Yeah, so when it comes to phase out plants, um, Solvay has a um, has a so they write quote a target to phase out all substances of very high concern present in marketed products at a quantity of more than. 0.1% by 2030, whenever feasible, uh, end quote. So that's pretty good. Of course, the whenever feasible uh, part is, uh, is uh, vague, but other than that, it's a good target. Um, if we look at PFAS, you know, 3M's commitment to uh, exit all PFAS manufacturing by the end of 2025 is very good, uh, you know, though it remains to be seen if they'll really uh, follow through. On this, uh, Sika in their new annual uh, report, um, you know they write that they've done a mapping of uh, their use of PFAS and uh, come to the conclusion that less than 0.4 percent uh, of group sales include, um, you know, come from products containing forever chemicals. So that's very good, uh, you know, disclosure. And they're also writing that they're working with uh, their suppliers to. To reduce uh, these substances. Um, Lanxess and Ecolab also has very good policies on uh, you know on their newly developed products so they state that they will not develop um, new products with SVHCs. So um, policies like that uh, you know they're very appreciated among uh, uh, among large long-term uh, institutional investors. Good examples, but it seems they might need some extra inspiration. During the forum, we will discuss investment and innovation opportunities. What is needed from the key actors like investors, those with the money, regulators and industry to really seize this opportunity. Yeah, um, so I mean if the chemical industry is to transition towards uh, you know, safer alternatives, uh, regulations are key. Um, you know, as long as it's cheap and legal to produce hazardous chemicals, um, it will continue to be uh, produced. So, but of course, there are other drivers uh, as well. So, you know, shifting consumer demands. You have these huge liability cases in the U.S. primarily, and all the reputational risks linked to um, harmful materials and so on. But uh, you know, regulation is the most important driver to provide um, clear incentives for companies to transition to safer alternatives. So you know, in the, in the EU, for example, when um, when new substances are uh, are added to the candidate or authorization list, 
list uh, that forces companies to to innovate and develop uh, safer alternatives. And you know this is uh, particularly clear with the upcoming um, uh, PFAS restriction, which uh, is also you know very important for the companies that already have uh, developed the alternatives and come a long way in developing them. So they need these kinds of regulations to ensure that they uh, that their products um, are um, attractive on the market. And also I should add that investors are becoming much more educated about uh, these topics and um, you know they're not looking for you know boilerplate statements about that companies are saving the world and pictures of lush forests and so on but what they really want is clear language uh, concrete KPIs and targets that they can track. Clear. So you basically say chemical industry has to continue their development of alternatives for hazardous chemicals. How should investors think about hazardous chemicals? Are there any de-risking tools available that you would recommend? Well, yeah, so asset managers, you know, they're all about managing uh, risk. And it has become very clear in the last couple of years that um, chemical risk, uh, you know, the financial risk linked to the production and use of hazardous chemicals is something they need to take into account. So, you know, just look at the share prices of uh, Bayer, 3M, Chemors, uh, you know, these companies that are being hit by, uh, by, uh, by wave of litigations linked to hazardous chemicals. Um, you know, it's clear that, um, uh, that this is something, it's clear to investors that this is something they need to pay attention to. So, uh, so what we think is that companies should uh, have a clear and time-bound phase-out plans for uh, chemicals of very high concern. And most urgently, they should phase out persistent chemicals, uh, you know, like PFAS, because they expose the companies to substantial regulatory and liability risks, and the investors uh, are fully aware of this. And um, so you talked about uh, de-risking tools. So many ESG rankings today, they you look at decarbonization and other environmental issues, um, but they're not uh, very focused on toxicity. And this is where ChemScore provides really a unique lens for uh, investors to look at companies, uh, the, the largest chemical companies, and uh, understand, you know, how are they actually addressing um, the chemical issue. I cannot wait to have investors, industry and regulators in one room sharing their ideas on assessing chemical risks and sharing building blocks for a resilient, sustainable investment. Patrick, what is needed to create the desired changes in the chemical industry? Yeah, so, well, again, I mean, regulation uh, is key. Um, but of course, you need pressure from other stakeholders as well. You need pressure from investors. You need pressure from uh, downstream users. They need to make it clear to the chemical manufacturers that they want safer alternatives. Um, and we also need, uh, you know, a few, a few frontrunner companies, uh, manufacturers that really take the lead and uh, see the business opportunities and the first mover advantages in uh, developing the safer alternatives uh, of the future. Um, but then I also think, I mean, personally, I think the government needs to play um, a big role in incentivizing uh, safer alternatives and financing um, research and development of, um, of alternatives, uh, you know, in universities and agencies. Thank you for your contribution, Patrick. I'm already looking forward to more inspiring contributions of ChemSec and the other stakeholders at ChemCon Asia's Inspire Investment in Sustainable Growth Forum in June in Bangkok. <laughs>